John Q. Public, and I approve this message. Yeah. News, traffic, sports, and morning show funnies. The talk of the Treasure Coast. 1590 WPSL. Let's make every day Thursday. It's time for that radio show everyone loves. Wells Fargo may be facing the heat, but Judy Conti of the National Employment Law Project says aggressive sales tactics are rampant in the industry. They have to sell as much as they can at all costs. Coffee's for closers on showtime. I saw that President Obama called into Ryan Seacrest's radio show to encourage listeners to vote. Yep. Even though he's the busiest person on the planet, he made the time to take President Obama's call. And I thought that was nice of Ryan Seacrest to do. <laughs> Some more political news. Yesterday, a group of Democratic senators sent a letter to Yahoo asking why they took so long to report the hack of 500 million users. Yeah, that's how little faith they have in Yahoo email. They sent a letter. <laughs> Finally, a little sports news here. Tom Brady is on the last week of his NFL suspension, and he was photographed in Italy tanning naked. Yeah. Just what we need, another Tom Brady ball scandal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, of course, we had the butt thing earlier with um, the Kardashian, but there's another butt story in the news. Oh, really? Two butt stories? Well, yeah, actually, I guess uh, Ellen was talking with Luke Bryan yesterday, and he's got some kind of no-touch butt policy going oh, here. Yeah. Check this out. No one can touch your butt. Well, we had to lay that. <laughs> we had to start that one. Like, they'd go to take a picture and then just Well, they'll sneak one in on you. <laughs> And it still happens. It's, it's, we've learned to understand it as a, uh, you don't want to tell your fans that they can't interact with you. Right. So you let them get away with kisses on the cheek. You know, like somebody will go, can, well, can I grab your butt or what? You're like, well, we don't know. Wait, 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 wait. They ask, someone says, can I well, grab they, your they, butt? If, if they, you know, back then, if it was a polite ask, we would oblige it. Well, you know, and, and, and guys, and I can appreciate this. I mean, um, you're just not going to go up to a star, a female star, and grab her butt. I wouldn't think so. So why would the ladies think they could just grab a male star's butt? Like, we don't, we... Well, how many Would men? you mind? No. You, you, no, why would you mind if a woman, a good-looking woman... Well, okay, all right. Now, see, now, now, now that's a different story. Well, what does it matter? Her what? hand is her hand. What does it matter what she looks like? It's what the rest of her body is looking like. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about the hand? So if you were a star, you wouldn't care that a woman just you know, kind of squeezes your butt cheek. Oh, wow, I squeezed well, I, his butt. I don't know, gee, but uh, I'm willing to give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. I guess, well, Luke Bryan, he, he's not one of these guys. He's, they a, go he's a country western singer, isn't he? Yeah, and yeah. they go through this all the time. These yeah. women, you know, they want to touch too. you and They're everything. Guys, you know. I guess uh, the cops in, uh, are cops in a little town in Wisconsin. They got a call on Tuesday night about a possible domestic situation. Some neighbors... They heard a guy screaming angry, horrible things in his apartment, and they got worried. And when the police got there, they found out what was really going on. The guy had DVR'd the presidential debate and was screaming things at Hillary. <laughs> I wish I had the audio of this, so the cops just told him to kind of yeah. keep it down there, buddy, will you? And uh, here's a dad in a, a wedding story. A guy in England pranked his daughter on her wedding day by dropping the cake. Mm. Paul, I can't tell you how many weddings I've done where by the time it's it's, it's a time to cut the cake. The mm -hmm. cake is like drooping, oh. and leaning to the side. <laughs> we we did a wedding, Paul, and it was outside, and the cake was outside. And Paul, I am not kidding you. They brought a wa window unit air conditioner. Really? Brought a window unit air conditioner outside. Just to keep the cake. And had it blowing on the cake. Did it work? I guess. I don't I don't remember. Well, well, they did it late because the cake had already started. It's a little wow. drooping thing. A little tower of pieces but thing. But this guy, this dad here, man, he was uh, he was about to give the father of the, the father of the bride toast. Stopped to thank the person who baked it. So he walked over to the table. It was on and uh, held it up for everybody to see. But when he put it down, he let it fall onto the floor. <laughs> Now, he got a pretty good reaction, too, then told everybody the real cake was on the other side of the oh, room. Oh, cute. I don't think I'm going to do that to my daughter. I wouldn't think I so. I mean, I'll get cussed the heck out, I'm sure. <laughs> good morning. It's 8.60 now. It's a Thursday, 73 degrees. It's time for news from 1590 WPSL. Florida's Gulf Coast will receive federal aid because of damage caused by Hurricane Hermine. President Obama approved a disaster declaration for eight Florida counties following the storm. The disaster declaration also includes hard-hit population centers in Port 
in Newport Ritchie and Tallahassee. Anyone interested in applying for federal assistance in the storm can visit disasterassistance.gov. Tropical Storm Matthew is getting stronger in the eastern Caribbean and could be a hurricane near eastern Cuba early next week. Then, com- com- then computer models, that is, are generally in agreement that it will stay east of Florida as it churns its way northward. The family of Miami Marlins pitching star Jose Fernandez is saying goodbye today in a private funeral. The Marlins organization will join the Fernandez family this afternoon in a closed-door funeral at St. Brendan's Catholic Church near South Miami. Washington Nationals player and Fernandez's personal friend Gio Gonzalez is expected to attend the service. Fernandez was killed in a boating accident with two friends early on Sunday morning. And the St. Lucie River is showing signs of a possible rebirth of the toxic algae that plagued the region all summer long. Photos show the algae in the Kruger Creek area in, St- in Stewart. The algae is also near downtown Stewart and Central Marine. S- a similar reports show the algae is also visible in Half Mile Lake Canal off the North Fork of the St. Lucie River. Army Corps of Engineers have been releasing over a billion gallons of water on Lake Okeechobee every day since last Friday, matching the discharge rate from early in the summer that led to massive algae blooms in May and June. CBS 12 is reporting that scientists will be testing out the river soon. It will take about two weeks to determine whether the algae is toxic or not. And Tallahassee's Capitol Building isn't exactly known for being an architectural masterpiece, and Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putnam is unhappy about a renovation he feels would make the structure look even worse. At the end of the day, we're not going to have anything really to show for $75 million being spent on this capital. We need to hit the pause button. We need to reevaluate the options because they're steaming ahead and just burning money like a cigarette lighter in a, in a wad of ones. Putnam adds that the cost of renovation is nearly double what the entire capital building cost in the first place. And Samsung continues its bad run of products. Today, the company acknowledged that some of its top-loading washing machines pose a serious risk. Some people report that machines have exploded. The problem occurs when the spin cycle, when some machines suddenly break apart. Consumer Reports' Jennifer Schechter has a story for us. Right now, people who are using their machines should heed this advice. Apparently, this has not been an issue with the front loaders, and the advice and the announcement is really focused on this specific scenario. So I guess, gee, you probably shouldn't have your phone near the washing machine, right? Uh, you're going to have a double <laughs> explosion. <laughs> you, and a new poll says the majority of American Americans believe that athletes should be required to stand for the national anthem before their games. CBS News correspondent Peter King reports. I'm Peter King. 52% of those asked say athletes should be required to stand. 43% say not necessarily, according to the Marist poll conducted for HBO's Real Sports. Keith Strudler heads the Marist College Center for Sports Communication. He says Republicans were more likely to feel that way about that and athletes' political involvement. 66% of Democrats said they wanted their athletes politically engaged. Only 41% of Republicans wanted that. 50% of those asked say it's disrespectful not to stand for the anthem, while 46% say not standing exercises the freedoms it represents. Peter King, CBS News. And finally, Florida's senior U.S. senator took the floor to thank his colleagues as a bill to fight to fund the Zika Fund is now clearing the Senate. $1.1 billion that has been so desperately needed, uh, not only assisting local governments and state governments with things like mosquito control, but also starting the trial on the Zika vaccine. And Bill Nelson said the disease had hit everybody very hard, but now the cavalry has arrived. And he was hopeful that the funding would quickly help stamp out this virus. And those are the stories making news this hour. Your traffic is coming right up. All right, Paul. Thanks a lot. Um, hmm, six things you shouldn't do in a public bathroom. Six things. And, and, and number six on this list, never leave the toilet unflushed. If you don't want to touch the handle, use your foot. Just <laughs> get it done. Now, wait a minute. Have you ever flushed... The stand-up thing with your foot? I'm, I'm trying to... Let me see here. Let's see. Try it once, G. Let's see. Uh, you're a little short, G. <laughs> I don't think I can... <laughs> I mean, you, sometimes you don't well, want to touch the thing, but what do you do? You know, I, I've been to several homes up in Minnesota where you're up by a lake and they have a septic tank, and, and in the bathroom it says... If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. <laughs> 
Oh, boy. I mean, I guess... Um, I don't, public bathrooms, they're not the most mm. the cleanest But you got to go, you got to go, G. Never skip the whole hand-washing thing. Don't just uh, let get them wet and pretend to wash. Take an extra <laughs> 10 seconds to lather up. And it says, um, never go into a stall together with a friend. Sometimes women get away with it. Otherwise, people assume you're doing drugs. <laughs> or never text somebody while you're waiting for the stall or standing at the urinal. It creeps people out because they think you're recording them. <laughs> Oh, here's a good one, Paul. Never use the urinal right next to the guy if there's another one open. <laughs> or find a tree someplace. That's what I say. I'm like, uh, I mean, it's already weird, so don't make it weird. Well, why is it weird? I mean, if that's the one that you're, if that's the one that you, you, your tunnel vision right next to the guy, what's the problem? And what's he going to go? Dude, you couldn't use the one over there? <laughs> and finally, um, ne- ne- Paul, I don't know if you knew this. Never use the hand dryer if they also have paper towels. Because? The study says that the, the blast, when that thing comes on, mm-hmm. it blasts the germs all over the room. <laughs> Especially if you if you only pretended to wash your hands. So now paper towels are more sad. Who so, pretends to wash their I hands? I don't know, man. but guys, the, 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 the blower thing, too. I mean, I, I, I it never works because I can't keep my hands under there long enough for them to dry. It's just noisy. Yeah, you hit are. the thing. <laughs> you just, oh, oh, the heck with this. Oh, boy. 823, The Morning Show. G and Paul. <laughs> You're hearing the morning show, Talk of the Treasure Coast, 1590 WPSL. Going to have the time of your life, I promise you. Paul told a very interesting story during the break. Paul, do you care? <laughs> oh, I can try. <laughs> usually you it, gotta, takes, it takes a visual, usually. Yeah, well, okay. you can describe it, I'm Well, sure. what happens is that, this is by John, you know, John Wayne, you know, was a famous, famous actor, sure. obviously. Mm-hmm. And um, can you hear me okay, G? Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. He said, I don't go to the urinals anymore. And the guy says, why is that? He says, because whenever I'm at a urinal, the guy next to me says, are you really John Wayne? And he turns towards <laughs> he you. Turns and he, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, folks. I know. And maybe you had to be there. Uh, eight, 826 now. <laughs> Let's check that traffic right now. No urinals out there for sure. We're in good shape here. No accidents, incidents to report. However, if you're dropping down south, I mentioned before, you've got at least 25 accidents wow. starting in West Palm Beach heading south. So please... Stick around the north for a while. We'll talk to you again soon. If you have anything out there you see, give us a call here, 340-1590. It's 1590 WPSLs, your world in 60 seconds. President Obama welcomed NASCAR drivers and Sprint Cup champ Kyle Busch. On the campaign trail, a familiar voice reappeared in New Hampshire. This time, Bernie Sanders is campaigning for Hillary Clinton. She will fight. Donald Trump is stumping in the Midwest. I will be the greatest president for jobs that God ever created. FBI Director James Comey told members of the House Judiciary Committee they had every right to dislike his decisions in the probe of Hillary Clinton's private email server. But Comey says the actions of his investigation investigators are totally above board. You can call us wrong. You can call me a fool. You cannot call us weasels. Families of 9-11 victims will now be able to sue Saudi Arabia, claiming the government was complicit in the attacks. Congress overwhelmingly voted to override President Obama's veto of the legislation. And if the government of Saudi Arabia uh, has no involvement, if there's no liability, they have nothing to worry about. New York Republican Peter King advocating for families to at least go to court before a 348 to 77 vote in the House and a 97 to 1 Senate vote. Deadly shooting spree in South Carolina. And those are the national stories making news this hour. Let's have a look now at the precious metals market. Gold is at 13.2090. That's down 0.16%. And silver is down 0.70%. That's at $19.14. The precious metals market has been brought to you by St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins, trading in gold and silver bullion in all U.S. coins since 1994. And now from Studio 3BA, let's talk sports. Paul Stone. Let's begin with a little sound effect here, G. There's that car again. (laughs) They can't get that thing. That's incredible. I mean, it's 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 actually Tim, Tim Tebow. Smacking a home run here, and uh, hey, it just well, doesn't sound I'll, that I'll hard I'll do it to me. for you again, Paul. You ready? Go ahead. Okay, there it is, folks. Well, hey, Tim Tebow did hit his first home run in a bat for the St. Lucie Mets. Tebow sent that ball over the wall at left center field. The Mets are playing against St. Lucie, St. Louis Cardinals. The uh, former Heisman Trophy winner in the Florida Gators and NFL quarterback is chasing his dreams of playing baseball in the major leagues. And here's what Tim, well, here's what Tim had to say. 
we I just wanted to have the approach that, you know, I was going to be aggressive. That's something that we've been talking about here every day and practicing it and trying to sit on off-speed stuff. But you get a fastball, drive it and be aggressive. And it's kind of my mentality anyway. So probably a little high, but just tried to get good barrel on it. And luckily it went out. Well, we're saying it's the Instructional League, which is one step below uh, Class 1A. But, I mean, hey, look it. you got to start someplace, G. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> well, Justice Winslow's position with the Miami Heat has finally been clarified. He's their small forward, or he's their power-playing guard forward, or shooting guard, or... Well, wait a minute. I thought it was yeah, clarified. Oh, well, <laughs> exactly. Or playing center. He's... Anyway, in Heat vernacular, the second-year player out of Duke is a Swiss Army knife. Now he's a Swiss Army knife. The jack-of-all-trades whose role is increasing. Not only will Winslow be called upon to play multiple positions, he's also being asked to take more of a leadership role now that Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh are both out of the building, mm-hmm. G. Yeah. Well, we're hearing a lot now about basketball. The Cleveland uh, Cleveland Cavaliers coach Tyron Lue in his first full season now at the helm isn't uh, how, sure how to direct uh, LeBron James when he's on the court, but also figuring out a way to keep the 14-year veteran off the court. As Cavs training camp opens this week, Lou said that maintaining James at 31 for the long haul, well, that's definitely a priority. And the Marlins walk uh, walked a half block alongside a hearse, carrying their ace away from Marlins Park at the start of the funeral motorcade, and then peeled away with watery eyes to go back inside to play a game. Drained by four days of grieving in Jose Fernandez's death, they didn't have much left in the tank for the New York Mets. Jay Bruce hit a, his 32nd home run, and James Loney also homered as the Mets helped their NL wildcard chances by meeting, beating the Miami 5-2. Don Mattingly uh, said his players were just emotionally spent. Tough to have a ton of emotion out there. I know guys are trying, and we know that we had to, this is one of those games that there's, you know, you, you owe it to San Francisco and St. Louis to put your best effort forward. I think our guys did the best they could possibly could. Red Sox have clinched the AL East. The Orioles beat the Blue Jays to keep sole possession of the AL wild card. And the Mets' magic number now shrinks to two after win plus a Cardinal loss. And let's see here, G. Tomorrow, the Americans will begin their quest for a victory in the Ryder Cup being played at Hazeltine National Golf Course in Chaska, Minnesota. The Americans have lost to the Euros eight out of the last ten attempts. So there's a lot at stake here. No question about that. Yeah, I'm going to say... Danny Willett, uh, the brother of, uh, I should say Peter Willett, the brother of Danny Willett, who, you know, Danny Willett won the Masters. He's a British athlete, pretty good. But he, his brother wrote an article for a golf magazine in, in Great Britain. Here's some of the things he said he, about the Americans. He said, they need to silence the, the pudgy, basement-dwelling irritant stuffed on cookie dough and pissy beer, pausing between mouthfuls of hot dogs so they can scream, Baba Booey until their jelly faces turn red. <laughs> they need to smash their obnoxious dads, their shiny teeth, Lego man hair, medicated ex-wives, and resentful children. Squeeze into their cargo shorts and boating shoes. They'll all bellow, get in the hole! <laughs> whilst high-flying all the other members of the Dennis Big Game Hunt Society. <laughs> oh, and, Well, brother. here's what Whoopi Goldberg had to say about that. Chat, please. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And tonight, G, of course, the Miami Dolphins will take, take a short week rest into a winning, and a winning streak as they come off their Week 3 overtime win over the Cleveland Browns into a Thursday night game against the Cleveland, Cleveland, Cincinnati Bears, Bengals. Cincinnati Bears, I yeah. like that. <laughs> Can the Dolphins sweep the Ohio series that was on the schedule this year? Well, mm. the game is nationally televised, airing on NFL Network. It's also airing, I might add. On WPSL, your exclusive yeah, Miami Dolphin station. Right. This is also G, a color rush game. Color rush Co- means uh, the game for NFL, which will have Miami wearing all orange uniforms. Oh man! And both jerseys and pants. The Bengals, meanwhile, will be in all white. Oh, that's it's a whole all new attempt thing. at doing oh, things. Oh no! Yeah. Don't yeah. do that. Oh. Well, the Dolphins are now one and two on the year, having lost their first two games, both on the road against 2015 playoff teams. So don't feel quite so bad, G. Mm. Anyway, they picked that trend again this week, heading to Cincinnati after one week return to Miami, where they opened the Hard Rock Stadium. So that's it, G. Well, here's a Super Bowl kind of Super Bowl story. The the most watched episode of a TV series this decade Mm -hmm. is the series premiere of Undercover Boss in 2010. 38.7 million viewers, probably because it came on right after Super Bowl 44. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, the Super Bowl itself gets more viewers, but it's not part of a TV series. Uh, The the mortar used in the Great Wall of China Mm -hmm. included sticky rice. 
And yeah. that's one of the reasons it's held together so well. Napkins were invented by Leonardo da Vinci? I'm telling you, man, Leonardo had a lot of things going for him. He even talked about a helicopter long before it was before flight it was even invented. 1491, he invented the napkin. And there are no laws preventing the NBA NF, and NFL or any other sports league from rigging their games. What? No law? There's no law preventing the NBA, NFL, or any other sports league from rigging their games. Doesn't sound right to me, but hey, I mean, obviously. Well, if they want to rig them, I guess. Uh, <laughs> wow. All righty, 843 now. The Morning Show, G and Paul. Good morning. It's 847. It's a Thursday. It's 73 degrees, and it's time for the final newscast of The Morning Show. Florida's Gulf Coast will receive federal aid because of damage caused by Hurricane Hermine. President Obama approved a disaster declaration for eight Florida counties following the storm. The disaster declaration also includes hard-hit population centers in Newport Ritchie and Tallahassee. Anyone interested in applying for federal assistance in the storm cleanup effort can visit disasterassistance.gov. Tropical Storm Matthew is getting stronger in the eastern Caribbean and could be a hurricane near eastern Cuba early next week. Then computer models are generally in agreement that it will stay east of Florida as it churns northward. The family of Miami Marlins star Jose Fernandez is saying goodbye today in a private funeral. The Marlins organization will join the Fernandez family this afternoon in a closed-door funeral at St. Brendan's Catholic Church near South Miami. Washington Nationals player and Fernandez's girlfriend, I'm sorry, Fernandez's friend, Gio Gonzalez, is expected to attend the service. Fernandez was killed in a boating accident with two friends early on Sunday. And the St. Lucie River is showing signs of a possible rebirth of the toxic algae that plagued the region this summer long. Photos show the algae in the Kruger Creek Stewart and also the algae near downtown Stewart at Central Marine. Similar reports show the algae is also visible in the Half Mile Lake Canal off of North Fork of the Port St. Lucie River. The Army Corps of Engineers has been releasing over a billion gallons of water out of Lake Okeechobee early since last Friday, matching the discharge rate from early in the summer that led to the massive algae blooms in May and June. CBS 12 is reporting that scientists will be, will be able to tell how the river whether it's toxic or not. That test will take about two weeks. And Tallahassee's Capitol building isn't exactly known for being an architectural masterpiece, and Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putnam is unhappy about a renovation project he feels would make the structure look even worse. At the end of the day, we're not going to have anything really to show for $75 million being spent on this capital. We need to hit the pause button. We need to reevaluate the options because they're steaming ahead and just burning money like a cigarette lighter in a, in a wad of ones. Button adds that the cost of renovation is nearly double what the entire capital building cost in the first place. And Samsung, well, they were continuing their bad run of products. Today, the company acknowledged that some of its top-loading washing machines pose a serious risk. Some people report the machines have exploded. The problem occurs during the spin cycle when the machine suddenly breaks apart. Consumer Reports' Jennifer Schechter has a story. Right now, people who are using their machines should heed this advice. Apparently, this has not been an issue with the front loaders and the advice and the announcement is really focused on this specific scenario. How many fillings do you have? Well, a new University of Georgia study says if you have more than eight, it could increase the mercury levels in your blood. Reporter Sabrina Kupit has a story. People with more than eight fillings had about 150% more mercury in their blood than those with no fillings, according to UGA researchers in Athens. But Atlanta dentist Ken Cohen takes issue with that number. It's, it's, it's an arbitrary and unfair measurement. He says not all fillings are the same size, so it's hard to put a number on it. The average American has three fillings, while 25% of the population has 11 or more. Sabrina Cupid for CBS News, Atlanta. And finally, here's Deborah Rodriguez with your Daily Dish. I'm Deborah Rodriguez with your Daily Dish. Meet the new Donald Trump. A promo for the season opener of Saturday Night Live features Alec Baldwin as the Republican presidential candidate. Kate McKinnon is back to play Hillary. 
As for the real Donald Trump, a 2013 interview with HLN's Showbiz Tonight resurfaces where he talks about a then-pregnant Kim Kardashian. She's gotten a little bit large. I would say this, I don't think you should dress like you weigh 120 pounds. But not everyone is complaining about Kim's size. Kim, Kim, Celebrity stalker Vitaly Sadiouk slipped past security in Paris, dropped to his knee, and put his nose up to Mrs. West's backside before bodyguards could take him down. I just can't wait. Disney announces Jon Favreau will direct a live-action version of The Lion King. She was the queen of the modern soap opera. Agnes Nixon, who created One Life to Live and All My Children Has Died, she was 93. With your Daily Dish, I'm Deborah Rodriguez, CBS News. And those are your stories making news this hour. Your traffic, let's have a look right now. Looks all we're good all morning long. No traffic accidents to report or incidents. If you see something while driving around out there, please give us a call. Our number, 340-1590. I'm just wondering how they came up with the expression backside. Well, My grandma used to call it that. Rather than saying something less Your butt attractive. or your well, booty, uh-huh. backside. <laughs> You know, your backside, do those pants make my backside look big? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to say? <laughs> oh, boy, you better not agree to that. That's the way says, do you think I lost weight? I mean, you got to say yes, mm-hmm. you, pretty much. Yeah. Never answer that. Yeah, you just don't answer. Or, say, you just don't answer. Or when did you stop beating your wife? I mean, when when did you stop beating your wife? There's no answer to that. When, no. did, when did you stop beating your wife? Yeah. Well, who would ask that well, question? It's been asked to you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know the, the expression... The devil's beating his wife? Yeah. You know when that happens? No. That's when it's raining and the sun is shining at the same time. Really? That's what we used to say. When, when, if it would rain and the sun was... This is before Florida. Okay. Because Florida's got its own deal. <laughs> deal. Yeah. We would go, the devil's beating his wife. It's like, what? <laughs> never I never understood that. it either. It just, yeah. We just said it. Never heard uh, that. You know, the, she, she talked about uh, Alex Baldwin. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, we just saw some... Uh, a preview of him putting on makeup. This dude looks just like Donald Trump. <laughs> this is going to be something else. Saturday Night Live this fall, because he, he's making guest appearances as Trump, beginning with the premiere this weekend. Mm-hmm. And the Hollywood Reporter says he's on board to do it for for the entire season, or well, maybe until November, depending mm-hmm. on how things go. Sure. But uh, just like Larry David uh, playing Bernie Sanders, which was very cool. I mean, that was funny stuff. Uh, Alec, he's friends with... Uh, uh, Lauren Michaels, the Saturday Night Live boss, and he's guest hosted 16 times. Wow. That's more than anybody. Um, Steve Martin is close to it with 15, but since Alec won't be hosting, those appearances won't add to his tally. But, uh, yeah, Alex Baldwin playing Donald Trump on Saturday Night Live this season. Well, I tell you, G, a lot of, there are a lot of, of uh, comedians out there just hoping, hoping that Donald Trump gets the nod so they can tell jokes for the next four years. I know. <laughs> Boy, it's going to be crazy. Oh. 8.54 now. We're- you're hearing the morning show, Talk of the Treasure Coast, uh-huh. 1590 WPSL. You're going to have the time of your life, I promise. You. Got a caller with another take on that uh, whole uh, devil beating his wife and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Good morning. You're on the radio. Hey there. Good morning. Yeah, the, the full expression, I believe, is beating his wife with a frying pan. <laughs> that When it's raining and the sun is shining at the same time? That, that's it. Oh, yeah? And, and that, that comes straight from my wife who's from the panhandle of Florida. Very good. Well, thank you very much for that. <laughs> there we go. You in trouble now. You in trouble now. <laughs> back in the day, uh, okay, Paul. Okay, gee. Well, 227 years ago, way back in 1789, Congress established the modern U.S. Army. The War Department set up the Army with the strength of several hundred men. <laughs> hundred years ago, 1916, John D. Rockefeller, Wealth made him the first American billionaire, and gee, that was in two thousand. That was in nineteen sixteen dollars. So that's a lot of money. Nineteen sixteen mm-hmm, dollars. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And uh, sixty six years ago, the <laughs> night the telephone answering machine was created by oh, Bell Laboratories. No. Yeah, that was the thing that did it. Six uh, forty years ago, this this is something I bet you didn't know, G. Jerry Lee Lewis celebrated his birthday by popping off a few rounds in his three fifty seven Magnum. Unfortunately for his bass player. Butch Owens. What? Two of them hit his chest. What? That's what it says. Did he die? Yeah. I, I, that's what it says. They don't lie to us here. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. 38 years ago, Pope John Paul I was found dead in his Vatican apartment just 34 days after becoming the 263rd leader of the Roman Catholic Church. Rumors persist about him having been poisoned. I guess that's still rumors, G. Mm. And let's see. 34 years ago, I recall this very well. 1982, the Tylenol Poisoner 
claimed his first victim. Wait a minute. I don't Tylenol. remember that. Remember the, he was poisoning Tylenol pills and putting them back in there. So when you bought one, took one, you died. That's why they have every pill bottle now and every bottle you ever get covered by plastic. So wait a minute. In those days, it, there wasn't, it wasn't covered by no, plastic? You so somebody up. could open it and That's do that. That's right. That's right. Yeah, this so was back in 82, G. Isn't that the long? Well, you know. So, so now they're covered with plastic, and they got a little cotton thing in there so it doesn't move around and everything. The cotton thing was always there. Okay, but now they Yeah, you know, because oh. they only filled it half full. Get that dude, see what that dude started? I'm telling you, man. He was just a hired hand working on the dream. Here, Paul, I'm going to bite the head off of the worm, and you can take the butt part, right? But the whole worm is all butt, isn't it? Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's going to do it for us, man. Hey, you have a good day, G. For WPSL Port St. Lucie, CBS News is next, followed by Cliff and Swap Shop. Great day. Talk to you on Friday.